Thank you for joining Resurrection Lutheran Church this Sunday morning, giving praise with us for God's blessings of music, prayer, and scripture. I, Pastor Karen Perkins, will be sharing a message of grace, forgiveness, and hope. All of the worship leaders welcome you. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, and whose promise is sure. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God of compassion, you have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour your love into our hearts that overflowing with joy, we may freely share the blessings of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now for the children's service, sermon. Have you heard of the Red Cross? Have you ever gone to a meeting where the Red Cross will tell you, okay, pack a bag that has all of the important information that you need, that has the things you're going to need, because if you have to leave suddenly, you will have what you need, and you can take care of yourself. Well, today we're going to hear a gospel story where Jesus told his disciples, you're going to leave, you're going to travel around, but you can't take anything. You are going to go out and you're going to spread the word and you're going to go to places where people may not like you and that's okay. Spread the word. If they don't listen, continue on. But just keep spreading the word. You won't have anything no extra clothes, no food, but he will provide. That's the word for today. Jesus will provide. He will show us how to spread the word if we allow him to open our hearts and know that by spreading the word, some people may receive it and some people may not, but that's okay because the Holy Spirit will work in his time. Now, if we could pray. Jesus, help us to be like your disciples, to go out and spread the word, even though we may not know how to do it or what we should say or what we should do. Jesus will help us. Amen. Amen. I invite you to rise as you are able. Let us together welcome the gospel. Jesus' followers is to continue the mission of Jesus himself. Here he instructs his first disciples as to how they might proclaim the gospel through their words and deeds. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the, his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, 
Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey, or two tunics or sandals or a staff, for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy and stay there until you leave. The as you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you like sheep into the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death and father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next, for truly I tell you, you will not have gone through all towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, O Christ. You may be seated. We get some confusing, confusing uh, verses in the gospel today. But first, I want to point out that the list of the apostles is named, the 12 apostles are named. This list varies a little bit between other places in the Bible where it's named. The point isn't who's in, who's out, what are their names, what do we call them? The point is that 12 is the number in Judaism for completion, right? 12 tribes of Israel, uh, 12 sons of, of Jake, Jacob, then Israel, 12 apostles. It's the number of 12, 12 um, yeah, 12 tri tribes. It's the number saying, this is, this, is, this is Jesus calling by name and completing the community of disciples. So that they are named is important because it's to remind us that we are called by name. When we are baptized, we are addressed by name and baptized into Jesus Christ. When we join a community, we are called by name. More informally, when, when we greet people that we recognize, we greet them by name. It's a way of saying, you belong to me in part. You belong to this community. You complete this community. And so even here, Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him, is part of the complete community. And then he sends him out. He goes, first of all, he goes about towns curing, curing the lepers, healing the sick, and uh, let's see. Yeah, every, to cure every disease and every sickness. Then he sends them out. I gathered you for a reason. I didn't gather you so that you could be gathered. I gathered you for a reason. I gathered you to extend the gospel, to continue to cure, to continue to feed, to continue to love in my name 
to proclaim the gospel. Now, I am going to admit, it doesn't sound fun here because he goes into all the awful things that are going to happen to them and all the things that are going to happen to us. And when you combine them with Paul's message about suffering um, and how, how suffering uh, produces uh, endurance and endurance produces character and character you know, produces hope and I'm kind of going, I don't know if I want hope like that. But the reality is that through, through this calling, part of what's being asked of us is that we empty ourselves of ourselves. And what I mean by that is, you know how when you say somebody's too full of themselves? It's empty ourselves of being primarily invested in ourselves. Because that is our nature. As human beings, it is our nature to be primarily invested in ourselves. But of course, the gift of grace is God's pouring out of all that God is to be in relationship with us. And we're invited to do the same so that we can experience the fullness of God's call for us. The only way to get experience is through experience, right? You can't get an experience any other way. It's in experiencing living the gospel that we encounter the way the gospel transforms us and the way the gospel calls us. So he's reminding, uh, put this down. He's reminding the disciples and us, got a job to do. Go do this job. Here are some ways to do it. And here I'm going to narrow down the Go, go first to the house of Israel. He talks about going to the, the other tribes later in the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew's pretty focused on Israel. But go first to the tribes of Israel because God called Israel to be God's holy people, which is exactly what is said in the reading from uh, Hosea. Wait, wait. Exodus, thank you, not Hosea. That's... Um, where Moses came and, and repeated God saying, I called you to be mine. I called you to be for me a priestly people. I called you to bless the world. That's why I called you together, Israel, and you will be mine. You will be my beloved people. For a reason. So go to Israel, Jesus says, and as Karen talked about for the children's message, don't take anything. I know that some people here have been in situations where they didn't, you know, their pockets were empty and they didn't know where their next meal was coming from, and it can be really scary and knowing where you're gonna stay and knowing what you're gonna encounter next can be terrifying. It is not different for us in the way we move forward, both in our callings as individuals, but in our calling as a community. We don't know what God has for us. We're being called to discern what God has for us. And I don't take anything. Don't take our own agendas. Agenda? Agendas? Okay, whatever. Agendas plural, but don't take our own. If we're all wrapped up in our wants, our comforts, our needs, our likes, our expectations, what are we shutting off? What are we shutting off from ourselves? We're shutting off room to have discover something else, something that, that isn't, isn't part of what we anticipate, isn't the food that we would serve at that person's house, 
isn't the, the formula that we would use to greet that person. I mean, that's the go each other piece of person house, and where you encounter hospitality, receive it. Trust that I will create, God is telling us, trust that I will create people for you to receive you. Go to them and know that I will provide. Notice, of course, the way God provides is through these other people in the community. So it's not a matter of packing and taking our own with us. It's about trusting that through this community, God will provide what is needed to do our work. But it takes a tremendous amount of courage because we have to be open. And many of us get flexed in ways that we don't want to get flexed. Last week I asked you, do something that is outside your spiritual comfort zone. How many people did that? Yeah? Do you want to share what it was? Or? Okay. Do you want to share what it was? I'm always outside my comfort zone. Okay. <laughs> it's a challenge for all of us. It's a challenge for me too. Because it's easier to fall back into our habits. And, and it's easier to take what we know we're going to need. You know, got my little dop kit and, and the leggings that are great for everything. You know, those, that fabric skirts that you can wrinkle no matter what, it travels really well. And nope, go to these people's homes. And as Karen said, be okay if you are not received. It's their loss. I mean, that's what, that's what it'll be worse for them on the day of judgment is, is, a, is a harsher way of saying it's their loss. Because while they chose not to receive you, they are missing out on the opportunity to be in relationship with God, with deeper, through deeper relationship with you. You also have to be open to what are the needs, what are the needs in this town? I could heal leprosy, but if there's no leprosy in town, then maybe I'm supposed to support my buddy's calling. Maybe I'm supposed to support the person that that buddy encounters this time. And be at peace when you're there, when you're in somebody else's home. And that's a toughie. Because I don't care how easy it is for you to get up from the table and wash dishes after dinner, it's still not yours until it's yours, right? You're not like until it's yours. But finding a way to be at peace with that, tr trying to find a way to say, to say, God, I am yours. I am yours. I trust you. I trust you to help me through my temptation to try to control this this path of the congregation, this path of my own calling, my own giving, this path of my own loving. And know that speaking truth to power will get you in trouble. The more you speak out, identifying injustices, identifying places where, where, where love is missing, identifying unkindness and systems that need to be changed. The more you do that out loud, the more trouble you will get into. It makes people mad because it makes them uncomfortable. Now, I'm not comfortable doing that, but that doesn't mean I'm not called to do it. Just because it's uncomfortable doesn't mean I'm not called to do it. And I guarantee you that the way the Spirit transforms you in accepting that, in accepting the, the anger and the resistance, the way the Spirit transforms you is marvelous, is wondrous is overwhelming.
take a step. Take a step. Know that this is coming, but know this too, this too is part of the way that God is using you. Because if you're not speaking out when something's wrong, if I'm not speaking out when something's wrong, who is? Trust that when you allow the room, the spirit will be there to direct your words, to heal your neighbor, to love as you are called to love. Amen. Please join with me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. obedient mercy. Let us offer our prayers to a world in need. For the church here and around the world, we pray. Seek out disciples and send them out with authority to proclaim good news. Bring healing where there is pain and counter the forces of evil. God in mercy, for the earth and all creatures, we pray. Equip farmers, farm workers, and all who labor on the land to produce a harvest. Nourish crops with ample rainfall and abundant sunshine. Restore lands ruined by pollution or misuse. God, in your mercy. For those who suffer, or for those who govern, we pray. Empower those who seek peaceful solutions to conflict and embolden those who advocate for all who are oppressed. Work through systems of government to establish justice throughout the world. God, in your mercy. For those who suffer, we pray. Accompany those who feel helpless, alone, or abandoned. Embrace any who long for successful treatment for mental illness, of freedom, of addiction. Heal those who are sick. God in your mercy. For fathers and father figures, we pray. Console all who long to be fathers children estranged from their fathers, anyone grieving the death of a father, and fathers who have lost a child. Draw near to all for whom this day stirs up difficult emotions. God, in your mercy. For those whom you send in your name, we pray. Guide presiding Bishop Elizabeth Eaton, Alaska Synod Bishop Shelley Wickstrom, Bishop Tessa Moon Lyseth of our Sister Synod, the Alaska Southeast Cluster, Pastor Karen Perkins, 
and Fairbanks Lutheran Church. God, in your mercy. For what else do the people of God pray? I'd like to lift up those who are suffering and terrorized in Sudan and Uganda, for those who are so desperate that they travel travel in ships to migrate and uh, risk so many so many of them risk to put our risk left. Pray for the survivors and those who mourn for better futures. For all the saints we give thanks. Receive into your eternal care all those who have died and fill us with hope that does not disappoint. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the part of our service where we lift up our gifts to God. We offer ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Members, of course, are encouraged to give our regular tithes and offerings through an assigned number, and we have regular vehicles for doing that. You're invited to go to our website and use PayPal or one of the other donate buttons that we have on the website. You can make a special offering to the RLC on KINY ministry, which helps keep this on the air, or to the RLC food pantry, or to Juno Live, which helps with community outreach. You're also more than welcome to come by in person or make a food donation. We encourage people also to be involved with the community and appreciate volunteers. All of these God, things are gathered the forest, together in song and prayer. Sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom and the power and glory forever and ever. Amen. And if you'll join with me in the mission statement. The mission of Resurrection Lutheran Church is to promote spiritual growth in Christ and service to all people. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed. Bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. Peace, share the harvest. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. This has been an abridged worship service of Resurrection Lutheran Church. You are welcome to join us for worship in person on Sunday mornings at 9.30. We are located at 740 West 10th Street in downtown Juneau. Our phone number is 586-2380. More information about our location, parking lot, current COVID policy, and other contact information is available on our website at rlcjuno.org. The website is also the best way to learn about what events are happening with the community outreach ministry, Juno Live. With a vital food pantry, bell choir, quilting group, Bible study, and others, there may be a ministry here just for you. 
Come and see.